Hello, so welcome to this video. This is sort of a little vlog because we have a boy down here who has decided that he needs to visit the ball fairy. He needs to get neutered and I want to explain to you the reason why I decided that that's what needs to happen. I'll show you. So here he is, Mr. Lacker. They were in a group of nine and he was just bullying the uh, weaker rats in the group. So um, a new kitten, a new oldie and just a general weaker rat in the group, a smaller rat in the group. And he's been doing this for a while and it's been getting worse. And we recently introduced the baby and um, the older rat and it just wasn't working like they were both very stressed out and I just decided that instead of doing reintros again and again which doing it again and again really isn't a practical solution because intros stress everyone out hello Maccabee I decided that reintros um weren't going to work in this case and he's going to get neutered in about two weeks time this is going to be a whole vlog so this isn't going to be a really long clip, but I'm going to vlog the experience as much as I can. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my best, guys, because I haven't been very good at, like, vlogging full situations in the past. But we're going to try, and Latka is going to become a really good boy, aren't you? Little cuddly bug. Mr. Latka boy. Hello. So this is a few days before Latka's new to surgery. I'm going to... I, I don't really know how this vlog is going to go, to be quite honest with you. Today, we split up their main cage into the bottom section and the top section. I think I mentioned this to you. So I've got the six good boys in the top section. And mainly because all of the stuff, like most of the stuff that was at the top of the cage already, I couldn't be asked to take out and faff around with. So that's where they were living before, so that's where they are. And then I put the three naughty boys here in the bottom. Lacquer, the naughty. The boy who will be neutered is right here. Um, and so now I'm quite happy with the amount of space that they both have. I'm in no rush to do reintros with um, like collapsing the group again because Herb was really stressed out by Lacquer, and I want to make sure that Lacquer is completely free of his pesky hormones. <laughs> Look at them, they're sleeping right here. Bentham. I was just saying that I wonder if they're gonna if they're gonna be a weird and sleep on the floor when they've got this massive hammock, this little perch hammock and the litter tray they normally sleep in, and they are sleeping on the floor right here. Well they were. Um so anyway, yeah. This is the cage we spent the Saturday sorting this out. Very grateful for the help of Rat Dad. And very grateful for our aircon. <laughs> really grateful for our aircon. So yeah, I will keep you up to date with what's going on with lacquer and everything and that whole day. Um, that's probably the next time I'll see you, to be honest. Or maybe I'll do a sit-down segment and answer some of the questions that you guys asked about neutering and things. So yeah. Okay, good morning. Today is the day is getting neutered. And I'm nervous. I have to go to work and teach kids all day so I'm a bit stressed about it hopefully everything is fine I I don't think anything bad will happen as always the worry so I'm going to show you what I am packing for him to take to the vet so first of all a water bottle and a water bowl I am not going to fill these up I'm gonna let them do that at the vet then Good. Um, and then in this little bag, I have the new bottle, the new branded malt paste, which is so annoying. Some weighted baby mix, a chew toy, and some treats. These aren't probably going to go to the vet, but this is vet wrap, I think it's called, just in case he needs it if he's 
messing with his wound. And this is a new sample flavour of Wait Up Baby that I'm going to try. Um, Rat Warehouse Sabi sent me this and I'm very excited. Um, yeah, and then obviously a carrier. I've put some food in there. I'm going to go see if I can find a bit of a water source. But we're only going to be in the car in the taxi for a couple of minutes. It's not really that big of a deal because afterwards then he can have a water dish if he needs to have a drink. But yeah, and then underneath I've got the hospital cage. I will go into depth about the hospital cage and all of that a little bit later on. But yeah, this is what's going on. I'm going to have to go and put my shoes on and then book the taxi because it's getting time to leave. And um, yeah, okay. So here is the little guy himself, Mr. Lacker. It's obviously a bit stressful for me. Um, and I've never had a proper surgery done at this fair. There is a vlog, oh, there is a vlog on my channel where I had the implant done, but given he is young, I would much rather go for the full neuter. Um, cause it, it's quicker, um, in effect and if worse comes to worse and he doesn't get along with males in the future, that means he can go with females, whereas with the implant, that's not really a possibility. But we're just about to head off. So, my little mans. So he's in, just been checked in, I think by a nurse, I'm not really sure, um, there's quite a lot of staff there and I'm new to this practice so I don't know everyone yet, um, signed the forms, gave him a little kiss, gave him some more paste, told them about everything that I brought with me, um, yeah I'm nervous because I've never had a proper surgery done here before, um, but yeah I'm nervous. I don't want to have complications, I don't want to have to anaesthetic complications, and I don't want to have infection complications. Because if you've seen my video of the neutering diaries, you will know that like the last two neuters I had, one of them had extensive infection complications, and the other one had problem with the anaesthetic. So yeah, stress. I'm going to go to work because... <laughs> I have to start working in like 20 minutes, so I've booked my taxi to quickly get over to work. Um, I'm stressed. I'm gonna go. <laughs> See you later. So, it's lunchtime. Just been called, so let me know that he's waking up now. Phew, no problems with the surgery. I'm gonna pick him up after work. So that gives him three or four hours more to recover. And we'll see what he's like when I pick him up, but I'm just glad that he's waking up now and that it all went fine. <sighs> Eww. So, the nurse has just come to check about the painkiller dosage. <laughs> Look at him. I don't think you can see it, but he's, he's doing much better than Paul did, thankfully. Um, I think he's going to bounce back pretty well. He's very interested in the mole paste, which is nice. So here he is, somebody sleeping, scratching. What do you have to keep in mind after the operation, especially in terms of aftercare, cage at all, dot dot dot? Okay, I know that what that one says. So when it comes to aftercare, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. You need to keep the wound clean and make sure they aren't messing with it. 
So obviously keeping the wood clean means using clean substrate, clean cage, cleaning out regularly if you need to do that. Some people like to use a newspaper so they can see when they've peed and pooed. Now that would obviously need changing a lot and I wouldn't recommend that past the first couple of days once you've established that they are eating and you know, drinking and peeing and pooing and everything. Also, they need to be on appropriate pain meds to allow them to leave their wound alone because most of the time when it comes to self-mutilation in rats, it's because they are not on appropriate pain relief because some people think that rats don't feel pain when they absolutely do. I think all animals animals feel pain. So that's like the number one thing is to make sure they've got adequate pain relief and they should leave themselves alone. If they aren't leaving themselves alone with just the Metacam or Loxacom or whatever it is that your vet prescribes, you could try adding in a higher level painkiller, something like Tramadol or Buprenorphine. I don't know how to say that, but people just call it Bup. Um, something like that, adding that in if he's not quite being covered by the Metacam, but it should do. If that isn't being covered and they still are a chewer, I know some does just chew and chew and chew on lumpectomies, even though they're on adequate pain relief, then you can wrap them or you can use like a, a cone. But I wouldn't use these unless you absolutely have to because they can be stressful, they don't allow grooming and they don't allow eating very easily. So it's much e easier and nicer for them and easier for you if you can just manage it with pain relief. And what was the, did I answer the whole question? I don't know cage setup okay so you want it to be low you don't want them to have to climb or be able to climb you want it to be low and small so they don't overexert themselves especially with another surgery unlike a neuter because a neuter is very easy because it's very normally quite a small wound and it's not normally very big but sometimes a spay wound or a lumpectomy or if you have any other surgery it can be quite a big wound so you don't want them to be sort of you know, climbing and ripping and sort of stretching, because if they stretch and they've got a wound sort of on their side that could open it, things like that. So you just want to bear in mind, you want to keep them in something small, like a hamster cage. And I say that like this, hamster cage, because obviously this is not suitable for a hamster. But you get what I mean. I think that's the whole question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What are you two doing? <coughs> this whole question I can read. Are there reasons for neutering other than their hormonal aggression? Most of the time, neuters are done for hormonal aggression, but it's not the only reason that neuters are done. They're very rarely. Sometimes rats can have testicular cancer. Other times they can have an injury to the balls that they just need them taken off for whatever reason. Or maybe some sort of skin cancer there, and it's just easier. I don't know. I don't know. There's, you know, not most of the time it will be because of hormonal aggression, and then you've got the sort of like then you've got the sort of like emergencies whatnot that could cause them to need an emergency neuter but most of the time it is hormonal aggression what do you look for in a vet when entrusting a neuter to them to neuter a rat so there's a couple of things you want them to have done lots and lots of rat surgeries before you want them to be very comfortable very confident and you want them to have done a lot of neuters it want you want them to you want it to be part of their daily practice ideally what was that boys you don't want it to be something that they rarely do you want them to be practiced and up to date on it ideally in my personal opinion you want them to use a gas anesthetic now there are some experienced vets who use injectable anesthetics like ketamine perfectly fine very expertly however if that vet is not very, very experienced when it comes to rats, and I don't even want to say an exotic, if that vet is not experienced when it comes to rats and they're using ketamine, that is worrisome because rats can have bad reactions to ketamine if it's not used properly. And so if your vet is a little bit under experienced than you'd like them to be, I would really opt for a vet that is doing it with gas, isoflurane, or there's another gas, I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, so you want them to be regular, you want them to be doing this regularly, you don't want it to be like, oh yeah, I don't normally do this, but I will. You want them to sort of regularly do things like this. And then general things for that, so you want them to be kind to you, nice, have a good bedside manner, all that sort of stuff. Mainly you just want them to be experienced. 
and it is sometimes hard to find and sometimes you'll find a more experienced vet who norm who is a cat and dog vet sometimes exotic vets aren't even aren't actually that experienced when it comes to rats and you don't want to go to a vet <laughs> and you don't want to go to a vet just because they're exotics if they're not trained and practiced in exotics if that makes sense yeah i think i covered that question it seems like a few of the boys that need to be neutered is there a reason you don't neuter them all so all the boys i've had neutered that will be three with Latka, have had hormonal aggression hormonal issues things like that and personally i would never neuter without a reason without a medical reason whether that being whether that be hormonal aggression or a variety of other things that might require a neuter in the end and that's because even though most of them come through surgery fine and recovery is not a big deal for them it's still stressful on the body it's still stressful on them the recovery is sometimes long sometimes it's stressful it can be expensive things like that i wouldn't want to put a rat through a neuter unless it was necessary for them i wouldn't want to put a rat through any surgery unless it was necessary for them now i do know that some people do spay does because of the benefits there are some benefits for not having mammary tumors later in life and obviously avoiding the worry of pyometra and things like that but with males i don't think it tends to have as many benefits just to neuter all the books as it would do to spay all the does and it's just not something that i'm comfortable putting my rat through surgery unless they need to um yeah i just don't think it's the best decision for them plus hanging balls is fun <laughs> plus balls are funny i guess according to rat dad yeah and they're sleeping and they're hanging there how do you recommend look after rats post-operation and how long to wait until the intro start so i've covered the uh, how to look after them post-operation Reintros really depends on the rats in question. So for some rats, they have, like Latka, some rats they're okay with. And I would wait. Oh my god, Maccabee is choking. Stupid thing. Some rats, like Latka, have some rats that they get along with and they don't need to be fully separated from the entire group. Some rats with hormonal aggression will be spicy with everyone and in those cases you do need to separate them for a longer period of time if your rat is like lacquer and has some rats that they get along with you just need to go a couple of days after the surgery ensure that they're peeing and pooping normally and eating and all that and then you can re-intro them just in the hospital cage like this and i have in the past put them straight into hospital cage right after with their friend i did that with akatosh and that worked out fine I just now have kept Latka alone for a couple of days just to monitor the pee and poo because it's not something that I thought of the last time. Um, as for reintroductions in a hom for like the hormonal side of it, it really depends on the rat. Sometimes their hormones could have died down within two or three weeks and sometimes it takes um, six, eight, twelve weeks for hormones to calm down and it really depends on the rat and their anatomy I guess. And I think in those situations, I would normally get, try at like three or four weeks if it doesn't work and then try two weeks after that. And if that doesn't work, try two weeks after that. But yeah, sometimes it can take a while and sometimes they're actually okay. And it really depends. Um, so that's all the questions. I'm going to get Latka out now and show you what his... Um, if he wants, wants to come out. I'll show you what his wound looks like today here it is um it looks so good they used glue it looks really neat there's not swelling um it just i'm really really happy with this surgery site cyrus get back in there you too <laughs> um he's doing pretty well he really recovered well from the anesthetic that really wasn't a worry which was so so good i was worried that it was going to be like pullman's neuter which it wasn't i think i mentioned that beginning of the video uh, generally he's just doing much better than some of the rats in the past have done um yeah he's doing okay um we go for our post 
op checkup tomorrow so that's three days post-op and we will be doing a 10 day post-op checkup i think as well um depending on all the things um so yeah he's doing really well and i'll update you tomorrow after our so as i said he's okay with his friends he usually is he's a little bit spicy with these three with these two but he's generally okay um yeah, so I'll update you tomorrow, um, at or during the post-op check, and that'll probably be the end of the video because I don't want to wait 10 days and all that, because I haven't posted a video this week because of said situation. Um, yeah, I think that's it. See you later. So, here I am again at the vets. Um, I've been here three times this week. Um, we are here for Latka's post-op check. I have Maccabee and Osiris with me here also, just to keep him company um, now that they're back together. Um, and we'll see how it goes. So, I don't know whether I told you, but the, I think she was a nurse, I'm not really sure. She was very happy with how Latka's surgery site looked and just his behaviour in general and everything. So, we do have a sort of 10 day post checkup in a week's time, but I don't assume we're going to have any issues because the wound, the incision looks super, super clean. Um, healing really really nicely um, so I don't suspect we'll have any problems so I definitely won't be carrying on this video any longer than today so thank you very much for watching this video and keeping up to date with Latka and his Nita and everything and all the well wishes on Instagram and everything I can't believe I managed to film this entire process I am so proud of myself for that and yeah thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one bye